and welcome to Spectrophotometry for Dummies. My name is Haya and I will be your guide for today's video. Spectrophotometry is one of the most common techniques used in a research laboratory. It is based on the observation that different molecules absorb light differently. And to put it simply, the way in which a sample absorbs light can give us information about the molecular composition of a sample. The most common use of spectrophotometry is to measure concentrations. But be aware that this technique is also used for other complex procedures such as measuring enzyme kinetics. Today I will be showing you how to use an old-fashioned standard cubic spectrophotometer and a more modern nanodrop. The difference between the two is that one is able to measure samples of a larger volume and the other one requires a mere few microliters of a sample. So let's go ahead and start with the cuvet spectrophotometer. Before using, you obviously want to turn on the machine. Doing so will then allow the machine to initialize and recalibrate. Just in case you were curious, this is what the cuvette slots look like. Each slot is conveniently labeled, starting with B for blank. To access the slots, press the appropriately labeled buttons. Since the machine is used to measure the absorbance of larger sample volumes, we will be using the cuvette. Begin by setting the machine to the desired wavelength. For demonstration purposes, I've created an increase ingredient using food coloring. You should always have a blank sample containing the solvent used to dissolve your specimen. In this case, I'm just using water. Load the cuvette into the machine by aligning the rectangular arrow looking thing in line with the opening in the machine. This is where the wavelength of light will pass through. Once all of your samples are loaded, select the blank sample and measure blank. This will zero out the spec to give you a more accurate absorbance of your samples. After measuring your blank, go ahead and measure all of your samples. You will notice that as the concentration gradient of my samples increases, meaning that the more food coloring is in my samples, the greater the absorbance value. Once you're finished with the machine, go ahead and remove your samples, turn off the machine, of course, and properly dispose of your cubettes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes our spectrophotometer. Now we are going to move on to the nanodrop. So this is what a typical nanodrop machine looks like. Obviously nothing fancy, but it's a beautiful machine. We are going to go ahead and open up the software program to initialize the machine. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to go ahead and just focus on the nucleic acid. Obviously, you can do a multitude of things with this machine, but some of you are probably wondering if this video is ever going to come to an end, so let's get going. Start by wiping down both the upper and lower pedestals with a Kim wipe. If you have no idea what I'm talking about when I say pedestals, it's these nubs between one to two microliters of DI water. Lower the sampling arm so that the two nubs touch and click on OK on the machine to initialize. Next, you will want to blank the machine similar to the way that you blanked the big spec. You will have to wipe down the pedestals with chem wipes again. I did an RNA extraction on some liver tissue that I was able to collect earlier on in the day, so I'm just going to go ahead and use this to demonstrate since my RNA was eluded in RNase-free water, that's exactly what I'm going to be using to blank. The default sample type on the software is DNA, so I'm going to change that to RNA. Wipe the pedestals with chem wipes again, and then load between 0.5 to 2 microliters of your sample, depending on how precious your samples are, and then go ahead and click measure. You'll end up getting something that looks like this where you can analyze the purity of your sample and record your sample concentration. When analyzing the purity of your sample, you want to look at two different values. The first one is the 260 to 80 ratio. 
This will determine if you have any protein contamination in your samples as protein absorbs at 280 nanometers. The second value that you should take into consideration is the 260 230 value, which will tell you whether or not you have EDTA, carbohydrates, or phenol contamination in your sample, all of which absorb near 230 nanometers. Based on the ranges that I have here in pink, the 260 280 value of my RNA sample is acceptable, however, the 260 230 value is a little lower than the acceptable range, which is likely due to phenol. Since my RNA extraction was based on a phase separation method using that reagent. And that concludes my video. Hopefully you were able to learn something new and eventually be able to apply the technique in a real laboratory. Thanks for watching and good luck.